Hey guys, coming at you today with one of my favorite frosting recipes that I don't have a standalone video on, my keto chocolate whipped ganache frosting. And of course we need something to put it on and St. Patrick's Day is right around the corner. So I'm gonna show you how to take my base recipes and make a keto chocolate whiskey cake with a keto bourbon caramel filling. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. My name's Alicia and I'm a pastry chef with a sweet tooth. And I'm here to show you all the tips and tricks on how to make the best keto desserts possible. So if you enjoy these recipes, please help me out by hitting that subscribe button down there, giving the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, sharing with all your friends and family, keto desserts every Saturday. So to start out this recipe, we need to start with the ganache because in order to have a whipped ganache, you need your ganache to set. You may be asking, what is a ganache? I will link up here my ganache video where it explains a lot of things and how to fix ganaches if you're reheating them and stuff like that. But this recipe is just for the frosting, which is super simple. For ganache frosting, you normally use a bittersweet chocolate or a semi-sweet chocolate if you're making a regular ganache. But I've never seen a keto bittersweet chocolate. So our options are either semi-sweet or dark. The nice thing is, is that we can add a little bit of liquid stevia if we wanna sweeten it up a little bit, which is what I'm gonna do. Because I was gonna use Lily's semi-sweet chocolate chips. These used to be zero net carbs for a half ounce. And a couple of years ago, someone mentioned that the back of the package has changed. Well, it changed to two net carbs per half ounce. That is a big jump. And if we're using a whole bag of that, 28 grams of carbs for this whole bag, if we're using it all for a frosting. Plus it's more expensive and Bake Believe chocolate chips are cheaper and you get nine ounces instead of seven ounces. We're gonna use this whole packet and only one carb per half ounce. So the whole bag is only 18. So if it was only seven ounces we were using, it would only be 14. So that is a big difference, especially if you're using this on top of whatever you're making because we're putting it on a cake, which already has carbs in it. <laughs> so I'm definitely going for the lower carb option here. You can use semi-sweet by Bake Believe. It is the same carbs as the dark. And because it is an Irish cake we're putting it on, I'm gonna add some Irish cream extract to the ganache. Okay, so that ends the spiel on the chocolate part. Ganache is just chocolate heavy cream. So I got nine ounces of chips here. I'm gonna do nine ounces of heavy cream. I'm gonna pop it into the microwave and I just want it steaming. I don't want it like boiling. Since we're heating up so much cream, you definitely wanna like give it a stir through the heating process because it's gonna get hot around the edges and not in the middle. You see it is kind of steaming there. I'm gonna take the temperature of it just to see where we're at. We're at 139. We'll probably do a couple more seconds because boiling is you know, usually 212 for water. I'm not sure if the same is true for like heavy cream, but a little bit warmer. You can also do this part on the stove. It's easier to watch and keep an eye on. You just want little bubbles around the outside and steam coming up. You don't want it boiling. 144, I'll we'll call it there. You just wanna make sure all of the chips are nice and covered. And I am going to put a little piece of plastic wrap over this. If you're using a container that has like a lid, it'd be easier. I'm gonna leave some vent holes so you don't want like a ton of condensation. So you don't wanna like seal it. You just wanna keep some of the heat in. We're gonna let that sit for about five minutes and then we're gonna start stirring it. While that's chilling for five minutes, I'm going to get onto my caramel because that also has to set before we can use it. And I tend to start stirring early when I'm just waiting and I'm trying to video everything. So I'm gonna keep myself busy. So I have a heavy bottom sauce pot here. Allulose is the only keto sweetener I have found that you can make caramel out of. Someone had just mentioned, again, isomalt, which is considered a sugar alcohol, but it's high in the glycemic index and I tested my blood sugar with it and it did spike. So I've stopped using that. That's literally what sugar artists use to make sugar sculptures. So it acts just like regular sugar in caramelizing and making things, but 
Unfortunately, it spiked my blood sugar, and I'm guessing it would spike a lot of other people's. It's kind of like a maltitol, stuff like that. Allulose, one cup, or it's usually 160 grams, but it depends on how like, clumpy your allulose is, because clumps are heavier than obviously if it's nice and sifted and powdered. I'm gonna go put a little bit of water just around the edge. I will link up here my caramel sauce video, because this will explain everything in greater detail for the caramel. So I'm gonna put that on low, like really low, because obviously I'm doing a bunch of other things at the same time and I don't want it to go too far. But if you're keeping an eye on it, you can keep it on like medium. And I'm gonna get the rest of my ingredients measured out for it. So because this is a whiskey or a bourbon caramel sauce, I'm using Jameson, just one ounce or two tablespoons. I just weigh everything, it's just easier that way. I have my scale, I might as well. Last night I did two ounces of heavy cream and an ounce of butter. But I'm gonna do just an ounce and a half, which would be three tablespoons. So I want it a tiny bit thicker than it was last night. So my original recipe was the same amount of allulose, but three quarters of a cup of cream and two tablespoons of butter. I'm cutting the liquid way down in order to make it a filling for a cake. And I looked up a regular just bourbon caramel sauce and kind of saw the ratios for one cup of sugar. They did two tablespoons of bourbon. So that's what I did in my recipe. And then I cut my liquid back because I know how thick my caramel sauce is, which is pretty runny. So I knew I needed it thicker if I wanted to put it into a cake. And then the last thing I need, well, two things. I did put a little bit of vanilla extract. So a half a tablespoon, <laughs> half a teaspoon of vanilla extract and two tablespoons of butter or one ounce. And I use salted butter. The, a lot of recipes said a dash of salt and unsalted butter. I just use all salted butter. And I always keep some out at room temperature, so it just makes it easier. And when you're combining it with the caramel, you don't want it super cold because you don't want to shock the caramel. So that's why I'm getting this all ready ahead of time also because I don't want it cold when it goes into the hot, like 350 degree sugar. So it's one ounce of butter. Okay, so that's all ready to go whenever the caramel gets to the right color. Now our ganache should be ready to whisk. So you start in the middle, you work your way out, slowly whisking it in. You slowly start going around the edge, getting all the chips in there. If they aren't all gonna melt, it's easier if you have this in a silicone or plastic, because you can just throw it in the microwave for a couple of seconds on 50% power. You never want to do full power with chocolate because if you overheat, that will cause it to seize. So I always suggest doing 50% power just for a couple seconds, especially ganache, because this is already pretty warm. It'll only take a couple of seconds to get those like residual chips that have been in hot liquid, you know, melting for a while. But as you can see, there's a couple of chips in there. I do have some warm water on the stove that I am just gonna set this over for a couple of seconds. I'm just gonna keep an eye on it and keep stirring it. I'm also going to give my caramel a little bit of a stir just to get a little bit of the sugar dissolved that's like still in the middle of the pot. Okay, it took a while for that to melt. The cream could have been a little bit hotter maybe, but it is now pretty much fully melted. This is what you want, a nice thick ganache. And you can obviously not sweeten this if you don't want to. I just prefer a sweeter chocolate. I'm not a huge dark chocolate person, so you can do whatever you want. I'm just kind of showing you the basics here of what you can do. So chocolate can only take so much liquid. If it seizes, it might just need a little bit more to make it come together. Okay, I'm gonna taste that real quick. It's definitely sweeter. I'm gonna add in a half teaspoon of this Irish cream extract. So a half teaspoon of each did not seize our ganache, so that's good. You get a little bit of a hint of Irish cream in there. I think maybe I'll do a quarter teaspoon more. Start with a quarter. That's good. Now we don't want to keep this whisk in there because it is going to harden completely solid at room temperature. You can put it into the refrigerator, but if it gets super hard, like refrigerator temperature, it's going to be really hard to whip. You kind of want it at just room temperature. So if you do put it in the refrigerator, you can do it overnight and then just pull it out in the morning and then it'll be ready like in a couple of hours when you want to whip it. Or you can just leave it out at room temperature for a couple of hours and it'll solidify. Or you can even leave it overnight and use it the next day. You don't have to refrigerate it for at least a couple of days. So I'm going to just set this aside and on to our 
keto chocolate whiskey cake. I am not Irish in the least, just to put that out there. I hate Jameson, I hate whiskey, but in things it's not bad. I like flavored whiskey, but that's full of carbs. I looked up the Jameson and it's zero carbs, but Bailey's is high. And then I love the peanut butter whiskey and blackberry whiskey. And those are both just full of sugar, of course. So <laughs> I can't have those ones, but we can definitely make a low carb cake with the whiskey in it. It's gonna taste delicious. Chocolate whiskey, yes. Caramel whiskey, yes. Not just plain whiskey. <laughs> Our stuff is slowly simmering here. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on that while we get our dry ingredients ready. I already did coconut oil. Normally I use avocado oil for my chocolate cake recipe, but I'm running low on avocado oil. So this is 12 ounces of organic naturally refined coconut oil. And I just put it on some water to melt down just cause it makes it easier to incorporate the sweetener into it. And when everything's warm and at room temperature, just everything combines better and our sweeteners, you know, dissolve a little bit better and stuff like that. So definitely for keto, I always try to have everything room temperature or warm. Speaking of which, I already have out eggs. So those are pretty much at room temperature. So what I did was just look up a chocolate whiskey cake. How much the batter makes is kind of how I judge ours. And it's pretty much exactly like the one I looked up. It's just, I don't want to make it into one full cake because we can make 30 cupcakes and that's a really big eight inch cake or nine inch cake. So I'm going to do one eight inch cake and 12 of my bigger cupcakes for a vendor show because St. Patrick's Day is coming up and I need something St. Patty's Day themed. And you can do the exact same thing and freeze. Everything freezes great. So you don't have to worry about that. So when I saw the cake recipe and saw it was pretty much the exact amount it would make if it was my cake, I'm gonna add the exact same thing. They did half buttermilk, half whiskey. So I'm doing that in here. And I'm just putting two teaspoons of espresso powder and it said special dark cocoa preferred. So I don't have special dark, but I do have black cocoa and regular. So I'm going to mix them. So that's just how I figure out how to convert my like base recipes into something I find online that's not keto. I just look up regular recipes and just kind of see the ratios and figure out what I should add to make it what I want. So my cake recipe has chocolate isopure, Dutch cocoa isopure. Chocolate ice pure has carbs in it and sugar. I did not know that and bought it by accident once. Dutch cocoa isopure has zero carbs per scoop. This adds a little bit of sweetness to it and a little bit of extra strength in holding it together because it has a little bit of gum in it. So if you use unflavored, you might need to add a little bit extra sweetness and a little bit extra xanthan gum. 120 grams, which is a cup and a half. Roughly. It's really hard to measure out protein powder and get an accurate measurement without weighing it. I never sip the protein powder because it's so fine and never really clumpy. But the coconut flour and cocoa definitely sift. Coconut flour is 74 grams or a half cup plus two tablespoons. Not this scale, but the scale I prefer that I use upstairs will be linked below in my Amazon links. If you do use those links, even if you don't buy the product, as long as you're on that screen, if you click on anything else and buy it, I still get commission for it, just so you know. So it's not really the product that matters, it's just using that link that matters and staying in that window. I should have used a bigger sifter. I probably am gonna get a bigger sifter because you don't want clumps of coconut flour or cocoa powder. Cocoa powder is the worst. Try and get lumps out of in your batter. And then total is 68 grams of cocoa powder. Yeah, all cocoa powder is way different. I am going to do half with the dark. So I only need 34 of the regular and some of the black. I want it nice and dark looking. Really our main flour is just whey protein and coconut and some xanthan gum. Everything else is stuff you'd find in a chocolate cake. Cocoa powder, baking soda, baking powder. I don't think I've ever mentioned it in any videos, but baking powder has cornstarch in it normally and aluminum. I try to get without there's always something in it though, usually potato or rice, but a lot of people are allergic to corn also. So that's why I try to keep it out of it. But no matter what, it's not going to tell you if there's carbs in it because it's only a quarter teaspoon, but a lot of packages, you'll see cornstarch is the first ingredient. 
This one, sodium bicarbonate, cream of tartar, and then white rice flour. So it has less in it than other brands. So I always buy a baking powder that doesn't have corn in it. You just need one teaspoon. And I realized that, and I was doing experimenting upstairs, and my husband bought double acting regular baking powder, and I realized my recipes might turn out different. So then I figured I should probably mention it to you guys too, in case something like doesn't happen the same way in your recipes because of the baking powder that I use. So it's one teaspoon of baking powder. And then this is really strong xanthan gum. So I'm only going to use half a teaspoon. The regular recipe is a teaspoon. And that's it for the dry ingredients in here. The baking soda, I found a way to make ours get really puffy by adding vinegar and baking soda later in the recipe. So that's what we're doing with the baking soda. I already have my oven preheated to 350. I'm gonna give that a good whisk. Oh, I almost forgot. I'm gonna do the two teaspoons of espresso powder. So I use Medaglia Doro instant espresso powder. I just love this stuff. We use it in our keto camping mochas. Okay, and we gotta get our sweetener. The sweetener in the recipe was like one and three quarters cup regular and a half cup of brown or something like that. So I'm gonna do 196 or one cup of white and quarter cup, which is 48 grams-ish. That'd be 244, right? So a quarter cup of the brown. So our cake had a lot less sweetener in it than the one I found online, but we have sweetener in our protein powder. And a lot of times on keto, people have less of a sweet tooth. We're gonna get that kind of whisking up. We want the sugar to be less grainy in there. So I usually whip it for quite a while. And the last thing we need is our liquid ingredients. So for our liquid, we need buttermilk basically. So I just do a tiny splash of apple cider vinegar. We're only doing five ounces of buttermilk. I use an unsweetened So Delicious coconut milk. And then I'm gonna do equal parts with the whiskey. There we go, 10 ounces of liquid all together. So no matter what you use, make sure you have 10 ounces of liquid. While that's going, you can also get your pans ready. So I have a sheet tray. I'm gonna put my cupcake tins on and I'm gonna spray these. Set them aside. I have a scrap piece of parchment here. I'm gonna line my eight inch round with and I'm gonna get my baking soda. So one and a half teaspoons into a cup a little bit big so that when it bubbles up, you don't want it to overflow. Oh, I also, I always forget, add salt because you're using coconut oil or avocado oil. It doesn't have salt in it. I do one teaspoon. I literally set it there so that I would remember to add it. I'm gonna give a scrape down to the sweetener. I can see there's some like up top. I'm just gonna whisk for a little while longer and then I'm going to add one egg at a time. It's pretty much the exact size I need, so. Make sure you spray the bottom and the sides. My caramel is almost getting there. Keeping an eye on it. Some people have mentioned you can powder your own sweetener and you can totally do that instead of like letting it you know, whisk for a long time. But I do a bunch of other things while that's going. So I don't see the point in taking extra time to powder my own sweetener. So I just do it this way instead. I'm gonna crack one egg at a time in here and add it and scrape down in between. I do it into there for that reason, because that broke really badly. Once the coconut oil hits anything colder, it's gonna get solid. So that's why it's looking like that. What really irks me is when I see people breaking their eggs on really sharp edges and then straight in. That's just asking for shells in your batter. If you hit it on a flat surface, you're less likely to have like shards of egg shell going into your egg. I usually do a couple teaspoons of vanilla. I'm gonna just do a half a tablespoon of the Irish cream. And then I'm gonna alternate wet and dry ingredients just like my regular cake recipe. It looks very similar to how it does when I use butter instead of avocado oil. Okay, we gotta add our vinegar to this baking soda. So we do two teaspoons, give it a stir. 
and into the batter. I want to mix this up good because if it's not, you'll get like random rises and not like a nice even rise. Smells like whiskey and Irish cream. It looks pretty delicious. I'm going to measure out my cupcakes first so I know what each one of those is and then I'll use the remaining for my eight inch round. So you can obviously do this at home in regular cupcake liners. You are going to probably get a do 15 cupcakes and fill them up like three quarters of the way full. If you use avocado oil, it's not going to be a thick batter. It's going to be like the perfect like box cake consistency batter. That's kind of why I like using the avocado oil because it makes it a lot easier. Put the rest in your cake pan. Going to want to spread this out nice and evenly. I'm going to have to get back to you on how long this takes to bake because most people order vanilla cake, which I find strange because I love chocolate. But the only chocolate cake I've made is for my son for a six inch cake. So I usually make cupcakes. You want this nice and even. Try not to have it mounded in the middle. Here we go. I know cupcakes take about 16 to 20 minutes. So I'm going to throw these in and the round cake in. I'm going to set it for 10 minutes and check on everything and see how we're doing. Okay, my caramel is almost to the color we need it. Make sure you have a whisk ready to go. You want to take it as far as you feel comfortable. A deep amber color. Like almost when you smell it like starting to burn and get too dark, that's when you want to take it off. It just smells like burning sugar now, so I'm going to put in our cream. Whisk it up. It's going to splatter, so be careful. Turn off the heat. Add in your butter and vanilla, and then you're going to add the whiskey. Measuring cup here just to get it to stop cooking because metal holds on to heat really well. So you want to get it out of there because it was definitely still cooking. Smell it. Okay, so this I am going to put in the fridge and just keep stirring it because you want this to cool and it'll take couple of hours and we don't want to wait that long for this to cool. So I'm going to put it in the fridge and just keep stirring it while I'm working on the other things. The ganache is already hardened so that only took two hours at room temperature. It may depend on your keto chocolate you use though. It also depends how hot it is in your house. <laughs> if this is during the summertime it could take a really long time to set. So just keep that in mind. So the cake has been going for 27 minutes and it looks like it's done. The way you know is it's firm in the middle and springs back and doesn't sink in. So this has to cool for a few minutes and then pop it out onto a wire rack to cool completely before we can even think about filling and frosting. And we are back and it is time to cut, fill and frost our keto whiskey chocolate cake. Sorry, the lighting has changed. It is nice and sunny in here now, but our cake is cooled. I pulled our caramel. It took a couple of hours in the fridge to get down to like 60 degrees, which is what we want. And the thing with keto ganache is this will have a little bit of a crystally grainy texture because erythritol, once you heat it up and it cools, it crystallizes. You want to do this like the day you're serving it because the next day is going to be, it might be a little bit crystally on the outside. So just keep that in mind when you're making like keto cakes, if you're doing ganache frosting or a poured ganache or something like that, just keep that in mind. Now I am a professional baker, so I do have a nine inch cake round. If you're not putting it on this, you can also just do it flat on whatever you're gonna serve this on. And normally if I'm doing a cake with buttercream frosting, I would use buttercream to kind of stick it to the cardboard. I'm gonna use just a tiny dab of our caramel sauce just for a little stickage action so it doesn't move around too much. Make sure it's nice and centered on your board. You might've overbaked this a tiny bit. It feels a little crusty around the edges. So might've been good at 25. I was just a little nervous that it wasn't done. 
Just make sure you keep your knife level. I'm gonna go all the way around. There we go. Well, it's pretty moist inside, so that's good. It's just a little crispy around the edges, but I think it'll be good. So now that this is done, I'm gonna clean off the edges and clean this off and get our ganache whipped up. We are just going to beat it up until it's super light and fluffy. And it'll get gradually lighter in color. You can go as far as you want and make it as light and fluffy as you want, but it's nice and hard. Maybe not set all the way through, but that's okay. Get all the really thick stuff down and mixed in. As long as it's like stiff to the touch, you're fine. It'll be a little bit harder though if you wait like the next day. You can always make this a day ahead. And make sure you scrape all the way down to the bottom. See some of it's darker in color. And make sure it's all nice and even. Before I finish that last beat, because it's going to not take long, I'm going to get a piping bag ready. I'm just going to choose my favorite tip, which is the 1M from Wilton. It kind of makes like a rose looking thing. I'll link up here my buttercream frosting recipe. That's where I show you how to pipe with this tip. You can put whatever tip you like in there though, or no tip at all. One more whip. See, it's already getting stiff. Yeah, that's good. Let's get it in our bag. We might need to re-whip, so keep your hand mixer handy. So because our caramel is like, you know, still runny, it's not, you know, completely solid or anything, not like a regular frosting or filling. We're going to make a little border around that. So you don't have any gaps. We're going to squish down the top onto here. We're not going to make a super thick layer of caramel. It's not a super thick cake, so you don't need a big layer. I'm going to just lift it up a little bit. There we go. I'm going to put a tiny bit more in there, but not much. I want a little bit to decorate the top with too. Okay. Lay that down on top. Do a little squish to squish out that frosting. You don't want a big gap in the middle of your cake. You want the cake layer to be touching your caramel. And we're going to do the crumb coat. And I'm going <laughs> to whip this again because it's already gotten pretty stiff. We actually probably do a little bit of probably put new stuff in the bag because it's already getting <laughs> stiff. For cakes like this, I just feel like small offsets are just easier to control. So that's why I almost always use small ones. Basically, you're just doing a crumb coat so that you don't get any crumbs in your nice, pretty layer on the outside. So I did that one around where like the filling was. I'm going to do another little one around the bottom because we used the top of our cake as the bottom. So it was a tiny bit mounted. So there's a little bit of a gap. So it helps to put a little bit more frosting at the bottom, but you just want to even it out, get it real nice and thin. You don't need a thick layer right now. Nice, thin crumb coat. You basically almost want to see the cake through it still. And it just gets all those crumbs coated in frosting. So you won't get any in your final. Because ganache pretty much sets without even refrigerating it, you know, we can go in with the second layer pretty easily. There we go. You don't have to worry about it being pretty or even. Just get it on there. Get nice and coated. There you go. Now, if you do have a ton of crumbs on your spatula, you don't want to put that back into your frosting. I'm going to pipe the rest of this into my bowl. I'm probably going to refill this bag to do the rosettes because it's already getting stiff in there. Okay, now let's re-whip. There we go. Plop it on. Save a little bit to pipe. You want a decent layer of ganache on top. Whatever's extra goes down on the sides. Pick up a little bit. Once you get one coat on, work on smoothing it all out. Make sure your palette knife is straight up and down too when you're doing the sides. Otherwise, you're going to have it like thick at the bottom and thin at the top. I'm really bad at that. Especially because my hands aren't used to this anymore. Muscle memory I don't use anymore. Once the sides are nice and smooth, take it. Your knife. You might need to warm up your palette knife if your frosting is getting too hard. Okay. I'm not going to be a perfectionist. So that is cake topped with chocolate ganache whipped frosting. Just delicious. We're going to do a little bit of piping on top and we're going to get to macros on this. 
The easiest way to do this is to pipe your serving sizes. So that way, you know, you don't have to try and eyeball it, but it's not easy to do this either, really. And one there, you get one there. So that's four. That is eight, it's gonna be eight. And then in between all those, that'll be 16 slices. And the last little bit of frosting. I made that first one a little big, of course. Okay, so that is 16 slices. So if you do 16 slices, so it makes each slice two and a half net carbs per slice for this chocolate ganache cake. If you do it into 12 slices, it is three and a half net carbs per slice. I'm gonna get the rest of this frosting into a piping bag with a smaller tip and try to do like a little border around the edge here. I just basically picked like a really tiny star tip just because I want to cover up that ugly cake board, you know? You can also warm it up with your hands. That'll help unstiffen it if you don't want to, or if you don't have enough to beat with a beater. Okay, so I got most of the white cake board covered up. It's not my best piping work. If you are gonna do that, you should make sure you're kind of on a bigger platform. That way, if you do go past it, it won't matter too much. I am going to add the rest of the caramel sauce to the edges also. So then that is the side view. Looks good. Use all that caramel. You can basically decorate it however you want. Should have went in some kind of zigzag or something here. <laughs> but it looks pretty delicious, if I do say so myself. I'm gonna take some pictures and we're gonna slice into this guy and give it a taste. It would hold up better if we refrigerated it for a little while or just let it set. Just because we just piped it, it's gonna be a little bit soft still, but. <sighs> that caramel just kind of made like a simple syrup, like moistened layer in the middle there. So basically for any cake, you can make a simple syrup, which is just sugar and water boiled down and you can like moisten your cakes with it. But that's kind of what we did with the caramel. It's just like seeping into the cake and it looks delicious and moist. That is whiskey for sure. It's really delicious though. I think it is a tad bit overbaked, so I will adjust the times in the blog post to probably only like 24 minutes on the cake. And just make sure you pull it out when it's nice and firm in the middle and you know no longer gooey and it'll come out delicious. Ganache frosting just melts in your mouth. So good. Mm. I hope you guys enjoyed this keto frosting recipe. It's one of my favorites and one of my family's favorites. And if you don't like the cooling effect of erythritol, this is the frosting for you because with all the other ingredients, you can't taste it as much as in a regular buttercream. I hope you enjoyed the little look into how I figure out a new recipe using my other staple recipes and let me know in the comments below what flavors you're thinking about making with my chocolate cake or my vanilla cake recipes, stuff like that. I love to hear what you guys come up with using my staple keto recipes. Don't forget to check out my Amazon links and the blog link to the full recipe in the description box below. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I'll be back with more keto dessert recipes. Bye, guys.